Today's message is brought to you by the partners and friends of Anthony Trice Ministries. Has a great plan for your life. Make it personal. Say, God has a great plan for my life. You got to believe that. You have to know this. Regardless of what's going on around you, regardless of what's standing in, in, in front of you, and you'd be surprised. Saints, they don't, don't fully understand or believe that God has a plan because they're looking at their situation. They're looking at the fact that somebody gave them away. They was raped. I went to jail. Oh, that don't mean nothing. God has a great plan for your life. And I'm going to show you this morning why you don't believe that. I'm going to show you. Man, I, I, I'm, 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 about, I'm on the runway. <laughs> and you may not admit what I'm, what I'm going to say to you in a few. You probably may not admit, admit it. Well, let me read this and I'll get to that. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 10, read. For thus said the Lord. Thus said, who, so who's speaking? Read. That after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. So watch this. The people of God was in bondage in Babylon for 70 years. That is a long time. L let me say it so you can relate to it. They was enslaved for 70 years. Wow. Here you go. You know why you can't move forward? Are you afraid of reason why you stuck? Because you have a slavery mentality. You wasn't back there picking cotton. You wasn't back there in the 60s. You wasn't back there. But why are you still affected? Because that spirit is still here. And it's affecting the way you think. You can say what you want to say. Oh, God, hit me, Holy Ghost. Listen, the reason why you're not evolving, because you're not growing. You could be in church. Jumping around, shouting, serving, working, preaching, and doing all this stuff that we do and not growing. And the reason why you are not evolving or becoming the person that God created you to be because you're not growing because you already think you have grown. I know preachers that stuff. They are knowing it. They love God, but they ain't going no further. And it's a lot more to obtain. But you think you have already arrived. I'm glad you said what you said because I don't care how much God has blessed you to this point, it's still more. But you will never tap into that. You will never get to that place if you stop growing. What does it mean to grow? Change? Y'all can say what y'all want to say. We have a problem with changing. A lot of you are the same person year in, year out. You know how I know? Your attitude the same. Your mindset the same. Your response to everything is the same. Every time something happens, you fall out. That's why you can't move forward, because you need to grow up. I'm going to show you how to overcome the spirit of being offended and taking everything personal that people do to you. You can't take it personal. That's how you overcome. That's how you combat the spirit of offense, because it's impossible that offenses shall come. So it's impossible to be around people if somebody don't rub you the wrong way. Somebody don't say something. Something don't happen because we are human. But you need to grow up. I refuse to get offended. And people behavior and attitude, I'm not letting that get in me. I'm not going to, you know how you do it? Don't take it what? Personal. So they was in captive for 70 years. That's a long time to be in bondage. That's a long time to be incarcerated. That's a long time to be tormented. But the reason why they was in Babylon because of their disobedience to God. When you get a chance, when you get a chance, I read this this week and God blew me away with this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1 and 2. It says, if you hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, then when you read uh, five or six uh, verses under that, it talks about that if you obey God when he tell you to do it, you'll be blessed. After you read that, it says you'll be cursed. 
Watch this. Watch this. Oh, this is going to help you right here. Watch this. The reason why you cursed, because you don't listen. People that don't listen always struggling, always going through, can't get past where they at because you don't listen. Can I say this? Please don't get offended. Our problem as African Americans is we don't listen. Can nobody tell you nothing? Because you think you know something. Read 28 and read verse 1 and 2. The revelation is this. The reason why people are under curses, because they don't listen. That's, ooh, that's some deep stuff right there. People, people that don't listen, you can link the fact that's why they broke. People that don't listen, that's why they ain't got no money saved. People that don't listen, that's why they sick. People that don't listen, that's why they got bad marriages. People that don't listen, that's why their business ain't they stuck in their business. Because they don't listen. And we are very poor listeners. Because we can't wait till they shut up so I can get out what I'm trying to get out. People that's cursed don't listen. People that's stuck, they don't listen. I will show my, read, I'm going to read that, read that. I'm excited. And I will perform my good word toward you. He said, listen, I will do what? I will visit you. I'll come and see about you. Mm -hmm. I will perform my what? Good word toward you. How many know God's word is good? Yeah. Read. And causing you to return to this place. God trying to bring you to a wealthy place. God trying to bring you to a certain place in your life. But you'll never get there if you don't listen. Next verse. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah. He said, I know the thoughts. This word thought means plans. For I know the plans that I think toward you. Read. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of what? God wants you to have some peace. You'd be surprised people don't have no peace. You're disturbed. Tormented in your mind. That's why so many people mean. You know why? Because they got no peace. And the reason why you got no peace because you're religious and you don't have a relationship. Oh, God. Help me, Lord Jesus. Read. And not of evil. And not evil. I don't care what's going on around you. It shall not come near my dwelling. I've settled that in my heart, mind, and so Yes, I'm going to wear my mask. Yes, I'm going to clean my hands. Yes, I'm going to do all I'm supposed to do, but I'm not going to live in fear. A whole bunch of people are afraid. That's why you ain't coming to church, because you're afraid. And, and we, we use, we say, well, I'm just being wise. No, you fr you're afraid. That's really what you're afraid. Because you're going everywhere else. <laughs> you'd have been still tricked. The devil tricking you. That's what that is. Read. To give you an expected end. Watch it. To give you what type of end? A prosperous end. Let me read, let me read this in a good news translation that I'll let you have a seat. I know you're tired. Alone knows the plan I have for you. Plans to bring you prosperity. I don't know why we have a problem with prosperity. That's your inheritance. That's a part of who God created you to be. Prosperous. I, the God we serve is prosperous. And you his ch child, you should have his DNA. All this raggedy stuff we got. No, we should have the best of what? Everything. And not disaster. Plans to bring you about the future. Hold on, I'm sorry. Plans to bring about the future you hope for. You may be seated. I would like to know how your expectation level is. What are you expecting God to do? So my subject this morning is God has what? A great plan for your life. And you know why God gave me this word? Because keep in mind, they was coming out of Babylonian bondage. They have not, They're just like, I don't know if you've ever been to jail before for a long time. Some of y'all have. When you come out, you don't have what? Nothing. You ain't got no job. You ain't got no house. You ain't got no car. You ain't got no clothes. You ain't got nothing. So that's discouraging. So they've been in bondage for 70 years being oppressed. And now they are coming out. So God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah to encourage them and letting them know 
despite what you've gone through up until this point, I still have a plan for your life. Let me see some real folks. How many of you all done failed lately? Good. Thank you. You didn't raise your hand. Let me, let me get some oil. If you fail lately, God still has a plan for your life. God's plan is not aborted because you failed or you sinned or you messed up or you slept around. Uh, y'all don't want to hear that one. Or uh, whatever you done did, God's plan is not aborted. Let me say this. Let me get this out of the way. In the black church, we are very legalistic. We torment ourselves. You'd be surprised people that have messed up and backslid because of guilt. They saw me. Who saw you? Who saw you? We are very legalistic in the church. We don't understand grace. And I'm not saying we should practice sin. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying we have not been taught that God's grace is sufficient for us. The Bible says he's rich in mercy. So God knew you were going to mess up. God knew you were going to fall short. God knew that you were going to miss the mark. And that's why he gave you an eraser on your pen. Ah, y'all don't want to hear that. But my point is, some of you all are so guilty about something you did 10 years ago. 10 years ago, you still guilty. You still let the devil whoop your head over something you did 10 years ago. There's no condemnation to what? Them that are what? In Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after what? The spirit. Condemnation means guilt and shame. Watch this. God convicts us, but he don't shame us. So if you're guilty and feeling shame and feeling bad, that's the devil. And he's trying to push you out the will of God. So go back to uh, verse 11. Let's read that again. Verse no, 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. This word thought. So God got you on his mind. God said, I know the thoughts or the plans that I think toward you. Watch this. You may not know God's full plan for your life. But if you walk with him, if you seek him, if you serve him, then his plan will eventually un unfold in your life. You don't know the totality of what God got for you, but as you walk with him, he opens it and reveals it. How is it you've been saved all these years? You don't know what God's plan is for your life. You should know something about what God got for you. People just, just, just doing something. No, you shouldn't be just doing something. No, God has a strategic plan for your life, but that plan will never come to fruition if you don't learn how to obey. All right, read. Thoughts of peace. Thoughts of what? So many people confused. So and many people disturbed. When are you going to get some peace? Man, this is a revelation right here. You know the scripture in Exodus chapter 14, it says the Lord will fight for you if you do what? Y'all probably need to write this down. You know what your peace is? Y'all ready? What God spoke to you? You missed that. What has God spoken to you? That's your peace that you need to hold on to while all this stuff going on around you. Y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. If you hold your peace, he'll fight. Or if you hold your prophecy, <laughs> if you hold your dream, if you hold that word of knowledge that's been spoken in your life, the Lord will fight for you. So your peace is to hold on to what God promised you. And to be honest with you, I was fearful. So I said, God, you know, he allowed things to happen. So something started happening with my vehicle. And I was like, oh, Lord, I'm feeling uncomfortable. I'm going to have to do something differently. So God will push us into the blessing direction he wants us to go. So uh, just to make a long story short, you know, I made a decision. Okay, God, I'm going to move forward, you know, and, and buy a vehicle. It was the same day that, uh, Bishop, that you did the seminar. My mind was already made up. And so um, I said, Lord, I want some. I want my taxes added in. The things that I had actually put my request in, the Lord honored it. And he honored it, and he blessed me, and I thank him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I thank him. I praise him. Hallelujah. It's been a long time coming, but I was content. But you know what? But God wanted me to have more. So what we do, we're focusing on everything that's going on and happening at the moment. How many know that that has nothing to do with what God said? It, anytime God gives you a word, after that come contradictions. And that's why we have to walk by faith. Am I making sense? So hold on to what God said, and when the smoke clear, that's what's going to manifest. Ooh, Jesus. That's powerful there. That's powerful there. So I don't care what, how the devil cutting up right now. I don't care what the doctor said. I don't care, the, I don't care what, what type of bills stacking up. I don't care who left me. I don't care how I feel right now. If I can hold on to what God said, it shall come to pass. I know it don't look good. I know it looks impossible. I know it looks bigger than you. I know all that. It's, it should. It's supposed to. <laughs> Because it's not what he said. Wow. Somebody spoke something to me some years ago back in Solomon Temple days. <laughs> How been long have we been going to Solomon Temple? 17 years. You remember Berwin? He prophesied something to me. It just came to pass last month. That was 17 years ago. And when he said it, I was like, oh, okay. I had never experienced that. I'd never seen it. So to me, I'm like, you know how you, okay. Okay? It took 17 years. 17 years. If you try to get something overnight, you're trying to be an overnight wonder, it ain't finna happen. It ain't finna happen. And, and see, some of us, we're in a hurry. Well, I got news for you. God ain't. They was in Babylon for 70 years because God had to teach them a lesson. You learn obedience by the things you suffer. So if you don't get it, you're going to keep going through the same stuff until the light come on. So if you don't get it, if you ain't listening to God, and God keep telling you the same thing year in, year out, and you ain't listening, he going to allow you to keep going through the same old situation until you get some sense in your head. And that could be your health, that could be relationships, it could be managing your finances, it could be anything. If you don't learn the lesson, you're going to keep going through it until you get it. I'm like, Lord, <laughs> I'm preaching too hard. I'm preaching too hard. I'm telling you, man, you, you, you do not want to miss God in these next three months. I'm telling you, because God's going to do some miraculous stuff, some supernatural stuff. God's going to breathe on some stuff that's been dead for years. You don't want to miss God. You can't afford to be disobedient in the next three months. I'm just prophesying to you. I'm telling you. I heard God saying, I'm going to do the grand finale. Woo. I don't care what the world say. And CNN and what they predicting, God going to take care of his people. Do you honestly think that God is going to let the devil outdo him? I don't think so. Moses, throw down your rod. Then Pharaoh threw down his, and, 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 and Moses' rod ate up Pharaoh's rod. Pharaoh represents the world. For some reason, we think that the devil is more powerful than God. The devil is alive. They ain't even on the on, on same level. The devil is a demon. God is a God all by himself. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I don't care who died. I'm praying for him. I hate it happen. But I shall live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. The devil is alive. I refuse to be intimidated. I refuse to be depressed. I refuse to be discouraged. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be sick. The devil is alive. The Lord wish above all things that I prosper and be in hell, even as my what? Soul prosper. How do 
you fight the devil? You fight the devil with words. It is what? Written. We just, we just sign up for packages and, and putting up with the devil stuff. The devil is the last time for us to fight. I said it's time for us to fight. Let me calm down. Jeremiah chapter 1. And let's go to verse 5. Say, neighbor, God has a great plan for my life. You have to know that. And not only know it, you have to believe it. Because it's going to be on. The devil going to, oh, watch this. All them generational demons that's in your family going to come and knock on your door. Some of us dealing with right now some demons that's been in your family line for years and they trying to get in on you. They trying to hinder you. The devil is alive. That's why you better know what type of spirits in your family line. Okay, how saved you are, those demons going to creep up on you and if you don't be careful, they'll come in. I, some, some of us got demons of poverty. You got a poverty spirit in your family. Some of us got a cheap demon. That's a spirit that's in your family. You cheap and stingy and tight. Some of us got infirmities in our family. Everybody in the family is sick. Some of us got spirits of, of lust. Lust. Y'all quiet. Some of us got spirits of drug addictions. Some of us got spirits of perversion. Some of us got spirits of alcoholism. Some of us got spirits of anger. Some of us got spirits of bitterness and resentment. And if you don't be careful, them demons will come in and rob you of what God is trying to do because you ignorant to the fact of what's in your family line. Spirits, man. Spirits are real. And everybody here got some spirit they dealing with. You can say you can look deep and wonderful all you want. It's some demons that's that's on your heels. Shh. Let me hear you. Someone's got demons of pride in our face. Everybody proud. Everybody arrogant. And ain't got nothing. They ain't got a dime. Not talking about you. <laughs> all right. Read. <laughs> the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth in the land of Benjamin. Verse 2. To whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. Verse 3. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, unto the end of the eleventh year of Zedekiah. Now watch this. The word that was spoken by God traveled through generations. Wow, this is what got me right here. It passed everybody when it hit Jeremiah. See, God's speaking, but we're not listening to God. Listen, God is speaking, but you don't know his voice. And see, this is the problem. When you have respect the person, you hinder who God speaks through. You ain't got to run up to nobody and say, you got a word. No, in a general conversation, at the right place at the right time, God will speak through somebody to you. But if you, if you, if your, your, your spirit is stocked up, clogged up, you're angry, you're bitter, you're depressed, you're cantankerous, you can't hear from God. And that's what the problem is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. God been speaking to me these last three months more than he even spoke to me in 30 years. How do you know when God's speaking? Look at the results. Look at the results. If you're not getting no results, you ain't heard from God. Because God is so moving right now. How many know the water is trouble? And all you got to do is what? Get in. He's speaking. But you can't hear because you're a wolf. Ooh. He said, my sheep hear my voice. Not my goats. <laughs> See, I got a lot of goats in church. But what is a goat? You, you, you buck against everything that somebody say. Uh, verse three. In the end of the 11th year of Zedekiah, the son of Hoziah, king of Judah, 
unto the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. See, they was in bondage again. They stayed in bondage. They stayed in trouble. You know why? Because they didn't listen. And they got in the beginning. The reason why our culture is in a rut that is in because we do not listen. It ain't the white man. I ain't studying the white man. It's, we don't listen. I'm telling you, you have you never heard that before. You've never heard that before. The reason why African American people, not, not all of them, are in the state they in because they don't listen. First of all, we ain't listening to God. Read. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, before I fall on thee. Listen to that. Then the word of the Lord, it skipped past everybody else because they weren't listening. All these generations, all these years passed by, and God spoke, but didn't nobody hear him but Jeremiah. It's offering time here at Covenant for Life International. I'm going to challenge you to sow into this ministry. I'm telling you, this ministry here at Covenant for Life is good ground. Our members are prospering. They're being blessed. They're getting out of debt. They buy new houses, new cars, new weeds. They buy everything new. Everything new. So it's a newness here at Covenant for Life. And if you want to connect to that, if you want to be a part of that, you connect with your seed. So this is an opportunity for you to sow into good ground. And what's on my life, on my family, what's on this ministry, will get on your family, your business, on your children and your grandchildren. But it starts with sowing. So I encourage you to sow your seeds into this ministry. Uh, there's a number at the bottom of the screen where you can call in and pay by credit card or debit. You can go to Give the Fire and Find Covenant for Life International. You can go to our church app or you can go to our cash app dollar sign No More Crumbs. And listen, when we say no more crumbs, we say no more sickness, no more disease, no more depression, no more brokenness, no more poverty. So I encourage you to go to my website and become a No More Crumbs partner. That is a love offering of $100 a month. And when you sow that seed consistently, what you're saying is no more sickness, no more disease, no more poverty, no more lack. So I encourage you to do that. God bless you. Thank you for watching us all around the world. God bless you. We'll see you next time. We invite you to become a No More Crumbs global partner. Together we can impact the world accomplishing amazing things for the kingdom of God. By supporting this ministry, it helps clothe, feed, and minister and so much more around the globe, breaking the back of life. As this ministry grows, may your life also produce fruit that will last. As a No More Crumbs global partner, we will lead around the globe creating change because your days of having crumbs are over. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. If ever in the St. Louis area, please come visit our North Campus, located 7200 West Florissant, St. Louis, Missouri, 63136. Or give us a call. We would love to hear from you at 314-659-8522. For more information on how to get connected, write to us or visit us online at anthonytrice.org. And we thank you for your continued support.